Mom, I'm on a cooking show. I, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Casale and my store is Casale Almare in Brigantine, New Jersey. And I'm here today with Tiger Pratt, who is our city manager here in Brigantine, and he and I are going to create a dish for you today. So we're going to do a dish known as spaghetti alla Norano, and this is typical of the Amalfi Coast in the summertime. Um, Traditionally, all the Amalfi Coast, from Naples down to Salerno, they make this wonderful sauce with beautiful zucchini, okay? So Tiger is going to be helping me uh, prepare and cut down the zucchini. So if you could do this for me right now, Tiger. Absolutely. See how thick I have these cut? They gotta be about uh, an eighth of an inch or so. I got it, okay? I, I can handle this. Okay. So go for it. So, do you cook at home? I actually enjoy cooking at home. Do you? I do. I, I have an amazing homemade chicken uh, Alfredo meal that I make for my wife and kids and they absolutely love it. Oh, wow. Keep cutting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sleeping on the job. <laughs> okay, so Tiger, tell me something. What is happening with our seawall? And I understand we got a bunch of money. We did, and and so I have to correct you. It's our promenade now. It's no longer the seawall. It's the Brigantine Promenade. Yeah. So we renamed it the Promenade because there was a lot of money out there through this Boardwalk Preservation Fund for promenades, not for seawalls. So we officially renamed it the Brigantine Seawall. I mean Promenade. Say, yeah, you know, so yeah. many years of saying it. So it's the yeah. Brigantine Promenade. Yeah. Um, and so we partnered with the county because it is county owned because it is on the county road. And we partnered with Atlantic County and we worked together with our grant writer, their grant writer, our right. engineer, their engineer, and myself and their administrator, Jerry Del Rosso. Right. And we came together and we put, put this grant package together and we got awarded close to $1.2 million Beautiful. for fixing the entire uh, promenade, which will be new railings, new lighting, um, some uh, new ADA accessible ramps, also, some the boulders along the um, the actual seawall, the bulkhead part. Sure. Uh, some of those need to be replaced or added to, I should say. So basically, we're going to kind of revamp the entire promenade and make it really, really nice. We're That's excited exciting. about it. That's exciting. Yeah. Are you going to extend it a little longer, or is it going to stay the same length that it is? So in the future, we would like to extend it 275 more feet, kind of to the northerly north east direction okay. toward like where the four-wheel drive access is sure. and um, so that is a future project that we're working with the Army Corps right now okay. but currently that is not part of this package that's great that's something that we really need in Brigantine beautiful, yeah. beautiful. yeah we love it we're, we're excited about it when do you expect this to start well unfortunately you know we got to go through the process for the grant money to come in we have to go out to bid for certain projects so, and everything in government moves pretty slow as we, as unfortunately we know that. So I'm, I'm hoping um, to have some of the projects starting over the next few months, but I don't have an exact timeline right now. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff it is. All Free right. grant money is always great. Yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna pull this pasta out of the water. Okay. I don't like to drain the pasta into a colander. Gotta save that water. Right, yeah. you are so right. And you know, there's a lot of nutrients in this water. So and we want to keep it, oops, as al dente as possible. Yep. So I'm gonna pull this out, keep that water for the pasta itself for when we create the dish. I love these tongs, they're that great. Is, yeah, they work pretty good. Everybody should have a pair of these tongs in their kitchen. I may be investing in them soon. When I boiled the water, is when I put in 
the Sicilian sea salt that I sell at the store, and it's coarse. So as it's boiling, then you put the salt in and you keep the, the boil at the high boil which it's at. Then you'll put your pasta in and um, uh, don't lower the flame, just let it boil the way it is. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so Tiger, what we're gonna do now, I just pulled this pasta out of the water, right? Okay. So we don't want this to stick. So what I would like you to do is do a little drizzle over that. Yeah. Okay. This is a beautiful oil too, guys. I have this. Uh, How's that? I might need a smidge more. Don't work with a smidge. Okay. Now we're going to let this sit aside for now. And we've just got to keep an eye on it so it cools down a little bit. Keep turning it so it doesn't stick together. Okay. And we'll be in good shape. We're gonna keep chopping away here, okay? Okay. And we have three more zucchinis to go. So if you I'm on would, it. you're on it. Love it. Once this is all done, we're going to saute that to a beautiful golden brown. Before we put the zucchini in the pan, okay. I just have a couple questions sure. for you. Sure. Fire so, away. Okay, in regards to the promenade, yep. are there gonna be more memorial benches? Yes, so the plan is to try to add some additional benches up there because right now all of them are full with the memorial plaques. So we are looking to add additional benches as this process of you know revamping and, and revitalizing the promenade. And if somebody is interested in, in getting uh, a memorial bench for a loved one, they can contact our uh, CER, uh, Mariette down there, or Jim Mogan or Kristen sure. Sullivan. They can all uh, walk you through the process and, and right. fill out. There's a little application process for it. There may be a waiting list right now because I know it's a hot commodity, yeah. but maybe with adding the new benches up there, the additional benches, then I think we'll get through that list. So that's, okay. that's how they do it. Yeah, because I'm interested in uh, uh, putting a plaque for my deceased husband. So that would be really exciting. That would. What about uh, the benches along the landscape in Brigantine? So all those new benches that are part of those streetscape programs, uh, currently they are not planning on doing memorial benches for those, just okay. the ones on the promenade. Okay. All right. Thank you for clearing that up. Yes, ma'am. I think it's exciting and it's great. Can't yes. wait. Okay. So what we're going to do now we're going to get the zucchini to saute. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is add a little bit of this olive oil okay. to the pan, okay? And you know the pan's ready because you can see how the olive yep. oil's moving around. So it's dancing around. Yes, it does. So what we're going to do, if you would like to do this for sure. me. Sure. Let's apply that to the pan. I love when they sizzle. All right, so we're going to get all these kind of coated. We're going to let them start to turn brown. I'm going to give you these. You could do that for me. Absolutely. While I get the salt and pepper. So what I'm going to do right now is just give it some pepper. That is a pepper mill right there. It sure is, isn't it? Here comes the salt. So now we're working at getting uh, the zucchini golden, okay? And we're going to even come to a point where it's going to start to break down. Okay. And as a matter of fact, right now I'm going to give you a touch of butter for this too. Gotta love butter. Yep. Butter's a good thing. Oh, I can smell that zucchini. Okay, we're going to come over here. Now this is Italian butter, by the way, guys. Oh, that's okay? amazing. Okay, and it's it's it is unsalted. Unsalted is what you should always use, and it's very creamy, and it adds a lot. It's amazing. Yep. You always save pasta water. It's full of the good stuff that comes out of the pasta. So what I'm going to do right now is just offer a little bit to this pan. There you go. That's what you want. Yep. I might give you just a little touch more. Now speed this process up just a little bit. Okay, so the pasta is going to be ready in a couple of minutes, but what I'm doing is shift knotting 
some basil that's going to go into the sauce as well. And then I'll keep a couple of leaves for um, garni on the pasta. So Tiger, let's get about half of this in there, okay? okay. All right. Okay, I'll hold up on that a minute. So let's stir that up real, 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 real good because what I'm gonna do right now is add this Parmigiano Reggiano, 24 months aged, to this pan. This is going to also cream this up beautifully. And I am going to give you a little more pasta water because you need to keep adding pasta water. Perfect. It smells so good. Oh my God, wait till you try it. I'm going to give you another little bit here. All right, so I think we're ready to start to plate this, baby. Let's do it. Okay. So what we're going to do, if I may. Yes. There is a technique that they use, and I'm not the best at it, but if you turn it like that, and it creates a little, like, funnel there. Yeah. This is going to be for you, chef. All right. All right. You know, when I was little, I used to cut my spaghetti. Oh, don't, no. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> but then I married a woman who has Italian in her, and now I do not cut oh, my spaghetti. Oh, good. <laughs> I have a friend who used to cut her spaghetti, and she knows who she is, and she's here in Brigantine. <laughs> and she's going to be watching this right now. And you know that who That is you a are. sin to cut spaghetti. That's right. Okay, so. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Mm. That's perfect. Oh my God. So good. This pasta, I love this pasta. It's amazing. Thank you so much for bringing me on here today. Oh, you are welcome. Thank That's you great. for joining me. We have to do this again. I would love that. Okay. Yeah. For sure. I hope you guys all try it now. Can you smell it? So I am out on the fields today. Spring training has officially begun. I am here with the president of our BBSA, which is Brigantine Baseball and Softball Association. And I'm joined tonight by Tom Rapici. So Tom, it looks like the city is doing some really nice work out here at our dugouts. What's going on? Yes, uh, they are coming in this year and they're gonna be uh, one, they fixing the dugouts here. They're also coming in and uh, are gonna be replacing our batting cage across the way there. So that's the uh, exciting news for, for us here. Um, also going to be redoing some netting at some point later on in the year. Which our um, cars will appreciate because depending on where you park, yeah. you, sometimes you don't know, you get a fly ball. Yep. So when is opening day? Opening day is uh, April 13th. It's a Saturday. Um, the parade from City Hall is going to start at 930. And then we're going to come down and we'll have our opening ceremony over here. First pitches. Um, should be about 10 30 10 45 um, and then we're going to have three games we're going to have the 10 u uh, baseball teams both playing each other um eight u softball both teams brigantine teams are going to be playing okay. each other and then we're going to have eight u pitching machine over on the other side okay, that are going to so play each other opening day this year is going to be brigantine playing brigantine there's going to be six brigantine teams playing each other okay. yep it's going to be great do we know uh, who's throwing the first pitch uh first pitch for baseball should be um uh, Jack Cittarelli. Okay. And we also have reached out to our lovely superintendent, uh, Glenn Robbins. Mr. Robbins, all right. Uh, in hopes that he comes out and throws an opening pitch because we have our brigantine um, baseball and softball teams that are going to be joining the school. So, Fantastic. This year. All right. Yeah. So, in addition to opening day, 
I'm happy to hear you're bringing back Sandlot Nights this summer, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to be doing it for a third year. Okay. Should start uh, July 7th. July 11th, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, every night, every Thursday night, seven to nine, um, kids can come. We organize pickup games, bring your equipment, bring anything that is baseball related. Uh, we have the snack stand open, which is always a nice addition because the kids love snacks while they're playing. But um, we just pretty much organize pickup games for different ages and different levels and the kids run the show and parents can sit back and relax and I like it can know. parents drop off or do you request that the parents hang out uh for the little kids like we go down to probably six seven years old uh, we'd prefer if they hang around it's always a fun time to watch yeah. them play um, and join in and help kind of run the games and in the sense of like maybe pitching or running pitching machines but uh you can certainly drop off uh, or kids just roll up on their bikes so it's um, it's a really nice atmosphere to kind of hang out at the fields and. It is. We love and, it. We only live a block from here, and we love watching. Come summer, everyone's walking in the fields. They're yeah. pulling their wagons. They've yeah. got their their bats. If someone doesn't have equipment and they're here on vacation and they just didn't realize this was going on, do you have gear? There's plenty of gear to borrow. Okay. Uh, kids lend each other equipment. Uh, we have stuff in the field house. We'll make sure every kid can play. Uh, the only thing we ask is that you wear at least sneakers. Uh, no Crocs, socks, or flops is what right. I always say to so the So you kids. heard it. No Crocs, socks, or flops, guys. Make sure you got your sneakers. Um, so how do you think this season's going to go? I know last year we had some uh, yeah, champions last year, among we, us. Yeah, last year we're coming off our uh, 12U softball team um, winning the Atlantic County um, Softball Championship for Babe Ruth. Uh, that was very exciting. Both of our daughters yes. were on the team. and um, Good job, girls. It was, it was a really... Um, uh, just memorable experience. I'll never forget it. Um, so we're, we're we got big hopes for the season. We got a couple really strong teams. Actually, our 12U boys are should be pretty strong and formidable this year. Um, and some of our lower levels are definitely second year into a level, and that's always your stronger year. So we're excited. I think right. it's going to be a fun season. So as a community, what can Brigantine do to rally behind our BBSA? Well, come out every night of the week. We have games Monday through Thursday. Games will usually start about six o'clock. Um, we will have, you know, some game, some sort of team playing at any given time. So they'll be out. Just stop by down the fields. You don't have to know anybody. Just stroll on by and watch a game. Uh, snack stand will be open most nights. So you can grab a snack, peanuts, pretzels, uh, McHugh's pizza. Yes, is always come on a, down a favorite. for your pizza. Um, so, yeah, any night of the week, Monday through Thursday, all the way through Memorial Day, and then playoffs start the week after. So. And don't forget, even though it's a spring sport, you're still dressing like it's winter. <laughs> bring your blankets, bring your winter hats, and bring your winter jackets. But it's always a good time. So thanks for coming on with us today, Tom. Yeah, and absolutely. good luck to everyone this year in the 2024 season. Thank you. Hope to see everybody out. I'm Emma, and I'm here today in the Community Presbyterian Church with Miss Rose, and she's going to talk to us about the thrift shop. We're in the sorting room right now. Can you explain to us how this works? Yes, absolutely. We have our volunteers that are in the building, and we're waiting to accept donations. People bring their donations to the back door. This is the first sorting room that they come into. All of the bags come into here. We have a few volunteers here, four or five volunteers in the back room. They sort the first, the basic first sort, which would be linens, housewares, which would go to the front of the store, and clothing stays back here to be sorted a little bit more 
thoroughly. Okay, so you guys have like a whole system, a whole process to make sure that everything gets put in the thrift shop. Exactly, and this is where it first begins, right here in this room. I'm here with Kate and we are in the shoe room and I found this adorable pair of leopard print shoes. I feel like they'd be perfect for a prom, a wedding, a dance. What would be the price for a pair of shoes like this? Three dollars. All of our shoes are three dollars. Some of them, if you were to purchase them, are 89, 110, all different prices. We only put out the ones that are in the best condition. We get every size and every style and boots and handbags. This is our wonderful holiday room that is open all year round. You can purchase Christmas items in this room. We also have Easter items, Thanksgiving items, holiday items, Halloween items. This is my wonderful friend and volunteer, Sonia, who maintains our beautiful holiday room. Sonia, what do you like best about the holiday room? Well, I feel like I get to celebrate all the holidays all year round. I get to celebrate Christmas. I get to celebrate Easter, I get to celebrate the fall holidays, and I just love coming here and volunteering in this room. They come in here and have a smile, and, and that's, what, that's what we mean to do. We want to put a smile on people's faces. So when you come out on Saturday, make sure you say hello to Sonia in the holiday room. shop with Miss Rose and we are going to talk about kids clothes and their super affordable prices. As you can see right here all children's items are one dollar a piece. So like the dress that Emma had showed you that is one dollar. pair of jeans would be one dollar. This beautiful winter coat is one dollar. Do you hold that Emma? Sure. Along with this beautiful child's dress here which is one dollar. Reminds me of like a princess. Isn't it beautiful? Every item here for a child is $1. In addition to our affordable kids clothing, we also donate weekly to the Jersey Shore Women's Center and also to the veterans in need. If someone in the community needs help or we know of a family in need, is there a program here or is there someone they can reach out to? Yes, absolutely. You can reach out to myself, Miss Rose, 609-705-0693. You can text me at that number and I would be happy to help anyone in need. We also give out gift certificates. We don't need to get a pile together for you. You can personally come out and pick out your items and we provide gift certificates in a certain amount. Um, but if anyone is in need at any time, they can just shoot me a text and we will return their call promptly. That is really great information for anyone in need. Absolutely, that is why we're here. That's first and foremost why we are here, to be a service to our community. So this is our main selling room, which everything winds up coming into this room to be sold. This is our wonderful cashier, Leah, who is here every Saturday to greet people and have wonderful fellowship. What do you like best about the thrift shop, Leah? The wonderful people I meet and have, it's great. Do the same people come in every week or do you have different people? There's, there's different people, yeah. We have our study customers who yes. we love seeing every week. Don't yeah. they though? They love coming oh, here. Oh, yes. they love it, yeah. The fellowship Look at the good wonderful. buys they're getting. The wonderful pricing uh, that we have. Price. We have exceptionally low prices. We have one priced items for different things. We have all of our, our prices are up here. All coats are $5, dresses, skirts, $3, shirts, $2, pants, $3. We love seeing everybody on Saturday morning from nine to 12. We have great buys. Please come and see us and visit us and you'll be back.
Today, I am joined by two fifth graders at Brigantine Community School, and we're hanging out in the book nook. And we are excited to share with you our brand new segment that these two just named moments ago. So let me introduce to you, we have Lorelai and Gavin. So Lorelai, why don't you tell us what are some things that you enjoy doing other than reading? Well, I do really like reading, but I also like play sports like softball and dance. And also like in the summer, I would go to the beach and like, yeah. So. And Gavin, what do you love to do besides reading? I like to play baseball a lot and go to the beach and have fun with my family. And Gavin, let everyone know you just named this segment seconds before we went on air. What's the name of our new segment? Let's Talk Books 2.0. And why is it Let's Talk Books 2.0? Well... When I came up with the idea, I pitched it to Miss Grimley about because we had a, um, a segment called Hooked on Books, and people started to think it got old, the name. So then I came up with the name Let's Talk Books, and then I named this segment Let's Talk Books 2.0 because we are talking about books today. Gavin and Lorelai, you were sharing with me that you read together as a class. So who is your reading teacher? Miss Murray. And uh, yes, Miss Murray. We're in we're not in the exact same class, but we have the same teachers. Okay, and what did Miss Murray just have you read together? Um Number so, the Stars. Yeah, Number of the Stars. By Lois Lowry. By Lois Lowry. And what was your high point of the book and what was your low point of the book? So Lorelai, why don't you tell me your high point? Ellen stayed over at their house even though like it was a bad time, but like um, Ellen stayed over at their house because the Nazis were out for Jewish people and she is a Jewish person and that like they were really nice and let her come even though they risked their lives to do that. Very difficult time in our history. So yeah. was it a, Gavin, what was your high point in the book? What was your favorite part? Well, my favorite part was probably when Kirstie in chapter one, uh, a Nazi soldier by the name Giraffe that they nicknamed him, she, he um, touched her curls and she said, get off me. That was my funny favorite part. Why was that your favorite part? It's just a funny moment in general <laughs> and it's just funny. Completely. And she stood up for herself, right? Yeah. So good, good for her. Okay, so now, what do you think this book taught you as a class? Um, just like to stand up for yourself even though like sometimes things are really scary and like yeah, life is hard, right? Yeah. Gavin, what do you think it taught you as a class? And sometimes, in some ways, people aren't always trustworthy, and you have to trust the right people, just like Amory trusted Ellen, and Ellen trusted Amory. That is a very big life lesson, learning to trust the right people, right? Yeah. I remember as a kid, I did not like reading. It was super hard for me. Um, give me all the crowns, give me all the markers, all the paint, uh, the 3D models, I loved it. But ask me to sit down and read, forget it. It was really hard. So parents, there's hope because now I love reading. Um, I don't get to do it as often as I like, but I promise you they'll come around. However, I do remember as a kid, one of my favorite books was Charlotte's Web. Have you both read Charlotte's Web? Last year, yeah, Miss Palmer. And we watched the movie too. Uh-huh. So, um, Gavin, did this book, was this the first book that didn't make you cry? I never really cry when I read books. No, and it's, it and I'm honest. Okay. It, it, it kind of did. Yeah. So. Lorelai, did this book make you cry? Um, no, no, I don't really remember reading it that no. much, though. I remember. I think this was the first book it really pulled on me. It got me. I was like, no. No, not Charlotte. So, what are you two reading right now? Do you have suggestions for um, the kids that are watching today? Yes, I'm reading The Sindersing Sweetness of Splendid Academy. Oh, and well, I already finished it, but like, yeah. Okay, and what what is your recommendation when it comes to this book, Lorelai? When it comes to this book, um, I would probably recommend it like 
third and up because there's some like scary parts in it. And okay. I wouldn't want like younger kids to get really scared. So this is not a book you should read before bed. No. No. Okay. Maybe I in the read morning. It and I had to skip a chapter because I got so scared. I understand. I wouldn't want to read that before bed. So what is the main theme of this book? Um, it's like kind of like trusting people and what they say, but sometimes you can't trust people. Sometimes you can trust them, sometimes you can't. Okay. So do you prefer nonfiction books or fiction books? Um, probably fiction. Fiction? Fiction, I don't know. All right, so let's, let's chat with Gavin. Gavin, what are you reading right now? Um, I'm reading The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. About, it's, an affili- it's a Philly story from 2008. Okay. And it's about the run to the World Series. And what happened in 2008 with the Phillies? The Phillies won the World Series against the Tampa Bay Rays. Yes, they did. Were you even born yet, Gavin? Nope. I was born <laughs> 2013. All right. So what's the theme of this book so far? I haven't finished it, but honestly, I can't come up with a theme. I have to finish the book first always to come up with a theme for okay. a book. Okay. So do you prefer fiction or nonfiction? Nonfiction. I gotta say this about me. I'm pretty much a history geek. Okay. I'm, I'm, gonna say it. I'm with you. I like nonfiction. I prefer um, biographies, give me the facts, teach me some exactly. lessons. Exactly. I wanna hear from people that have lived through experiences. Um, nonfiction is sometimes hard for me to get into. I'm more of like Here, give her the mic. I'm okay. more of like a um, historical fiction because I like when there's made of characters but it's also like a real event okay. like I like the I survived because it had but because it's like fake characters but it's like um historical but it's like fiction, yeah events. yeah it's real events so okay. yeah. all right so you heard it here historical fiction is something that Lorelai loves Gavin and I are on the same page give us the facts we want to learn lessons history nonfiction it's there my favorite go. So thank you to Gavin and Lorelai for giving us some wonderful suggestions. I'm looking forward to seeing where this segment takes us. We would also love to hear from you. If you read any of these books that Gavin and Lorelai have suggested, send us a message. Drop it in the comments of this YouTube video, or you can email me at brigantineliving at gmail.com, and maybe we'll have you on, and we'll have a little book discussion. Before we go, I want to give Gavin and Lorelai a suggestion. Something we love to do in our house are daily readers. Have you ever had a daily reader? Nope. So I'll tell you what I love about the daily reader. If you don't have a whole lot of time to sit down and read, or you just struggle with focusing maybe, um, reading a whole chapter, you can pick up some daily readers. And you just open it to the date, and you read a quick paragraph. Sometimes it's just a statement. Sometimes it's a full page. And they'll give you some, usually insight or some tips for the day. So one that I got for Emma is called A Year of Positive Thinking. And it's great because you just turn to the page and you read what it says for the day and you walk out the door with a little bit of a positive thought. These sound like really good. I think I think I might try to buy, I think I might beg my parents to buy me. Yeah. Okay, we're going to beg Lorelai's parents. Maybe you can get her a daily reader. And the one that I read as a grown-up is by one of my favorite um, authors. He's a speaker and he's an excellent leader. And I, although I've never met him, I definitely turn to him as a mentor. Um, John C. Maxwell puts out some great stuff. Anything by him I love, but I read the Maxwell Daily Reader every single day. And we usually wind up talking about them at the dinner table. All right. right. Final thoughts, Gavin? That sounds great, but yeah, Yeah. that's it. But you'd prefer some chapters? Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have chapters, and my whole family is history, basically. It's history? Okay. Yeah, and I would really prefer nonfiction books. All right. Okay, so this has been our first edition of? uh, Let's Talk Books 2.0. Okay, until next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.